Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, Lancaster International Piano Festival. We are celebrating our 10th anniversary this year. Um, I'm Dr. Xun Pan, one of the uh, co-artist director of the festival. And uh, it's such a pleasure for us to have Mr. Boris Berman here to give a master class to uh, three of our students uh, today. So uh, without further ado, Mr. Berman. Thank you very much. So we have, we have three works today, and we begin with Ravel's La Valse. Yes.
listen, it's a very, very difficult piece and you definitely know it very well. Uh, you are very comfortable with the piece and with very considerable technical challenges it presents, which is all really very good. I would like to recommend a couple of things. Well, first of all, this piano is a very good piano, but it's kind of not yet played in fully. And you probably have noticed that the tops are a bit muffled here. So uh, it is particularly difficult to bring out the melody on it. And sometimes you succeed, sometimes it could be done better. Another thing, and uh, this is more important perhaps, you, uh, you know that this is an orchestral transcription and you, uh, you are supposed to play with your two hands while the whole big orchestra is playing and you are doing it and doing it very well. I think at all times it should be clear what is the melody and what is not. Uh, right from the, actually from the first page, uh, right from Tarim Pariram, and this uh, are not uh, the part of the melody. I think we, you need to create a It should be clear for the listener that this is only the, uh, the birth of the melody. It just emerges. Uh, f f and I think it should be clearer what, what the melody is that it emerges. But even more important, I I would like to mention uh, to mention one thing. Uh, what do you know about the piece, the origin of this piece? It's a, it's a Berzin piece. Hmm? Berzin piece, like it's a waltz. It's a waltz. Yes. Uh, what was it written for, and what was the idea behind it? Yes. Okay. Well, first of all, it was composed as a music for a ballet, for a dance. And it was composed for the ballets of Sergei Diaghilev in Paris, and uh, who presented, who premiered some of the major works of the 20th century. Now, what was, uh, this is modeled, this waltz is modeled after the waltzes of Johann Strauss, after various Viennese waltzes, um, like there, there are several tunes, actually, who are, uh, uh, that are coming uh, in succession. And the question is, why? Why did he bother? Why did he bother to write 
a kind of uh, piece in a style of Johann Strauss. What did Ravel, a recognized modernist of his time, what did he have to do with the uh, with Johann Strauss? Any thoughts ab about it? He, he wanted to do some representative uh, was in his his period. Yeah. Uh, uh, did she want to do some difference? Yeah. Some? Well. Yes, maybe, although the, the writing is uh, not so <coughs> representative of Ravel's writing. What he wanted, and it is documented, it is not only my uh, fantasy, uh, this whole piece was meant to be a kind of a monument to the era that disappeared, that passed. Remember, it was written soon after the First World War. Uh, and, you know, Europe went through major devastation. And the, the period of glitter, of luxury, of uh, carefree enjoyment, which probably uh, the Viennese waltz represented in the end of the 19th century, well, it came to end. And in a way, this is a kind of a monument to, to this period. Uh, it was, uh, I don't remember if it was actually staged this way, but the idea of the choreographer was that at the very end, the couples, the pairs are swirling and they're going higher and higher on the stage. The stage was kind of rising and they fall into the precipice from there. Uh, showing that, well, that's the end. So, and there was clearly the idea of mounting frenzy of, uh, of the mood in this piece. It's clear it goes uh, through more and more disjointed uh, fragments uh, appearing from different uh, sections of the walls. So, uh, and so I would like it all to be somehow felt, I would like this waltz to have certain nostalgic feeling, the certain feeling it's beautiful, but it's not going to last. You understand? Yeah? Yes or not? Uh, not really. Well, how should I put it clearer. Well, I think we'll just start working, but what I felt that you present each of these themes good, but first of all, they're all sounding a little bit alike. I... Uh, they're a little bit similar. Oh, yeah, I see. And I would like them to be different. And I would like also to have not only the different sound, but the different character. And maybe we'll talk a little bit 
uh, about it as we go. Let us start playing. Please, start again. So, what is the character of this? It's hmm? like a dangerous. Okay, so do it, do it. And I think that this octave, it really does not belong to the melody. So make it very clear, but different from the, mel from the melody. Yeah? Okay, let's do it again. You, you can start right there. Yes. Very good, but in piano, in piano. Oh. Let's go back to the beginning. One thing which uh, he marks very clear. The first beat is always a little bit more. It is accented. Can we have it? So from here, there is a more continuous melody, right? Yes. So make, make it different. Uh, make it more singing, more continuous. Can you start with the top of the page, please? Yes, this is something different. The character changed. How would you describe this? It's like a light. From the light, dark. yes, and maybe good, and maybe more lyrical, more dolce oh. after what we had before. Can you please play from second line? Piano. Very good. It's much, much better. Much better. Tell me, please, do you know how to dance waltz? No. No. Have you seen people dancing waltz? Uh, yeah. Yes. It's like, it's, it's so common. Yes. So, waltzes are coming in different uh, varieties and largely depending on the tempo. This waltz is in one. It's not one, two, three, one, two, three, as some. This is a faster one, and it's in one. And it always has this kind of sweeping quality. 
ja parīra, pamparāra, pampar. So, I would like it not to be static, it always to be going, swirling, sweeping. I want the beginning of this uh, page again, please, if you don't mind. Yes. Mm -hmm. The stress on the second bar, right? Mm -hmm. Very good, it needs to be brought out, but it's pianissimo, so maybe it shouldn't be so solid. Okay, so, so yeah, letter A, please. With all these uh, pauses, there is something light, something almost joking. Uh -huh. All right, so let's change it. Uh, if you do not mind, okay. It's a big topic and uh, it may lead us very far, but one thing I would like to, uh, to uh, you to think about. Waltz became extremely popular in Europe in the middle of the 19th century. Extremely. Uh, everybody danced it. There were walls where people danced the walls. Any reason why this dance was so popular? Maybe uh, in that time people, people didn't have any entertainment. Uh, well, okay, f fine, maybe they did not have entertainment. I think they did have entertainment, but there is still a question, why the waltz? Why not the minuet, which was before? Why not a gavotte, which was before? Why waltz? Well, it is because of the way it is danced. If you have seen, and you should uh, get interested in it, you said you saw how waltz is danced. How was minuet danced? Any idea? Well, uh, the dancers are opposite each other. There is very little physical contact between them. Waltz actually 
uh, demands physical contact between opposite sexes, which was completely unheard of, completely. Uh, more than that, you know, in a polite society, there were some restrictions. For instance, you, as a young man, was not supposed to talk to a young woman unless you were, repre uh, uh, you were presented to her. Uh, it would be considered very rude. And if you were presented, you, your conversation would be supervised, always. There would be somebody, an older person, uh, to make sure that you behave properly. Not in the waltz. In the waltz, you are with the young woman in your arms. Nobody hears what you are talking about. Uh, you are, there is a moment of intimacy which was completely unknown and did not exist in any other social settings. That's why I think Waltz was so popular. And for this, the music for Waltz was not as, well, should I say, as appropriate, as ceremonious, as uh, minuet uh, uh, has been in many cases, but more emotional, more intimate, more sincere, more reminding of the conversation. Like here, for instance, well, 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 yes, uh, you can hear it like a conversation between a lower voice, presumably a male voice, and more light, higher, presumably a woman, more graceful. That's what I would like to get. Do me a favor, can you start once again, letter A? the top, a little bit more of the top. ask you to play once again from Kiel. Hide all non-essential notes. Do not play them with the same degree of articulation. Hide them. Make the melody shine here. Okay? Listen. This note, and then 
all these notes to be standing out, please. When you want to bring the melody out, do not necessarily press. On this piano especially, it does not bring good results, but just quicker, gentle touch, quicker stroke with the fingers. Once again. the fifth finger. What is the melody here? Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. So everything else, very important, but secondary. And this trombone, very important, but secondary. Okay? So from here. I want to hear. Again, the second bar more important. Pam, param, pam. Okay? Just the left hand here. Left hand. Okay, what I would suggest on one hand, the fifth finger always a little bit marked. Because it's the foundation of the harmony. On the other hand, everything else not articulated, not like this, but more kind of combined, bundled in the harmony. Okay? Anything interesting about this section compositionally? Okay. It's like uh, every 
Tan and every Tan into your heel. Yeah, good, good. So the left hand here is clearly in three four, right? Yeah. What about the right hand? Yes, it can be called syncopation, but I think it's better to call it hemiola. Uh, Do you know this term? Yeah, yeah, from the three chords. Uh -huh. So while the left hand plays one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, the right plays pa ra pa pa ri ra ri ra ri da ri ra ri ra ri pa ra pa ra pa pa ra it also plays in three, but bigger three. Can we try to, <laughs> to combine it? It's not easy. Let's try. Okay, good. Once again, less articulated uh, uh, the left hand except for the fifth finger. Good, good. So the melody is tam para im para pa para tam para. The fourth bar is filled with the with the arpeggio, which is again try to make more slightly more blurred, more feeling that it's a background. Okay, okay. Not not narrative. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, yes, and good. And here it is also Himyola. Pam parim parim pam param. Tam parim parim tataram. Okay, let's do it again. Very good, go. Okay, 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 good. And all this sweeping scales and glissandos should not disturb the melody. And in these chords, we need top. Okay? Yes, okay. And this is less. Not less loudness, but less articulation. Okay?
Very good, very good. Do you hear the difference? Okay. Yes? yes? So this is the fundamental thing. Keep the melody separate from the accompaniment, from the background, especially when the accompaniment is so busy. Okay. Yeah? Okay, keep going. Okay, good, good. It's so difficult. Would you mind playing without eighth notes? Just two, two lower lines, okay? Good, good. Singing warmer, okay? Once again, this way. better. Let's try to do the way, uh, uh, the way everything is combined, but make the melody warm and singing, please. Yes, Find the way to make it expressive. No, I want to hear. I want to hear this. different about this melody comparing to some we heard before? It's more, more, more legato, more singing. Right, it's more legato and it's longer. It's, it's not tarari, ta, 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 three bars, tararam, pa, 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 ra. it's an eight bar phrase. Okay, so can you play it again and make it very singing legato and long, think long. to wrap it up, but one thing, one non-musical issue about waltz, which is important to know. Uh, while dancing, you can talk, you can talk about the most intimate things. One thing you cannot do, one thing you mustn't do, you must not stop dancing. You cannot, in the middle of the waltz, just stop, stand, put, and talk. No, all this conversation needs to be while dancing. And so here, too, 
while you play very beautiful melody, but keep the pulse of the dance. Okay, please. phrase it's four and four but second four is the direct uh, continuation of this and then okay What's the melody here? It's something with the light thing. Uh, I am not sure. I would say the first bar in the right hand, but then it's the left hand. For a change, let us listen more melodically to the left hand. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, and this melody is different in what? It's a clear difference between the first bar, which is bright, fortissimo, and then flutes very uh, delicate uh, and clear, okay? Okay, and here, in addition to all this uh, triplets, we have this, and we have. So let's hear it. Okay. I think we need to stop here, but I think I made my point, and I think if you look into the music from this point of view, from the point of hearing clearly the melody and feeling the difference between each melody, then I think uh, it will be, uh, become much more exciting. Okay? Good. Okay, let us. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Picture. Can it? Yes, okay. Let us have the picture. Thank you. Okay. Uh, who is the second uh, player? Please try the piano for a couple of minutes and then, uh, and then we'll work.
living. Thank you. Okay. So good to see you. Thank you. We'll be in touch.
very good, very beautiful and very lyrical, which is appropriate to the piece. But let us talk for a second about Polonaise in general. What is Polonaise? It's what? Here or so. Well, to begin with, Polonaise is a dance. It is a dance. It is danced. You don't know how it's done. And it's very important uh, to know because uh, it affects many different things. Polonaise is a processional dance. It's actually... Uh, not much of a dance. The couples, the pairs, uh, file. It's kind of usually in a ballroom. It's, it needs big space. They file uh, and they hold each other and they proceed. Basically, they walk, but once they bend their knees, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So, this is a, a, prof, uh, a processional dance. And it, it is a representative dance. And it needs to have the, this kind of dignity in it, even in lyrical passages. Now, uh, do you know other Polonaises by Chopin? Yeah, the Polonaise, uh, uh, Chopin wrote quite a few Polonaises. And it seems that for him, this form was a kind of symbol of his motherland, of Poland. Uh, and you mentioned uh, the hero song, uh, which is incorrect, but in spirit, it is, there is something. Uh, in it, because usually Polonaise is uh, dignified, uh, kind of heroic. There are many heroic uh, Polonaises. This one is different. But I think we need to make sure that it does not sound like a nocturne. That it is not a nocturne, it's not just a lyrical piece. Another thing, I gave you an approximation of uh, how Polonaise is danced, not just for you to laugh at me, uh, which you have full right to do, but to show that basically the steps are done in quarters. And for this reason... The proceeding will be... And not... in eighth notes, okay? So, kind of dignified. And in a way, this lyrical uh, melody comes in a certain clash with this uh, form of Polonaise and in a certain clash with the indication of the composer Allegro Appassionato. It's not Allegro Dolce, 
It's allegro appassionato. Very fiery, maybe. So can we try? Please. I, I know you want to make a crescendo, and it, it is marked fortissimo. Right, do not start very loud, but do not start piano, okay? Yes, 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 here. If you play, if you articulate it so much, then the pacing is lost. Lift it. Good. Yes, he writes poker is in order. Uh, and you should make it. Well, let's be uh, very clear about it. This piece is not meant to be played for, for the dancing. It is, in a way, mm, somewhat removed from there. So we go back into the strict processional and then we allow ourselves to be a little bit more lyrical. So it's the combination which is very difficult. Okay, let's do it once again from the very top. Very good, much better. Now, I would like you uh, to look a little bit. You pay a lot of attention to the melody and it's very good, but I would like you to pay attention to the left hand. Can you play just from here, left hand alone? the term harmonic rhythm. Yes, what does it mean? Actually, it sounds much more sophisticated than it is. Harmonic rhythm means how often or how 
quickly the harmonies change. And here, what I would like you to feel that it is definitely not each eighth note. In many cases, it's each quarter. But not always. Not always. Here it is. One. Three. One. Two. Three. One. Three. One. One, three, one, two, three, one, one, oh, three. And that's what I would like to feel in your playing. So can you play from... Very good. Let's do it again. Let's do it again and feel this natural bow. Ta pararam dararam dararam parararara. Yeah? So this section is more or less parallel to this, right? Right? But it is sotto voce, so it's beginning soft and then makes a crescendo. And it is peppered with syncopation. I said peppered because it gives kind of a little Punch a little spice. Pam, pa, 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 pa. Okay, let's do it. Okay, good. Let's do it again. There is a difference between a syncopation and the downbeat. Syncopation can be very active, but it's always light. Downbeat can be quiet, but it's always something to lean against. Mm. Pa, not ta 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 ta, but pa 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 pa. Personally, I personally would make a little comma. A little comma, yeah. Tell me about this section. 
Lyrical, yes, more lyrical. What about the harmony? Anything special about the harmony here? Mm. Major, key. Major key, yes. Which, by the way? Mm -hmm. B major with, with A natural. This is the main harmony in this section. What is this? Yeah, this is simple. It's a dominant seven chord, right? For which key? Resolve it. Huh? And for what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars, we are sitting on this dominant and not moving. And then only we'll move to the home key. So what I would like the feeling of a certain suspense, like the preceding. Stopped, we have a sudden. But always feeling that this is a dominant, it wants to be resolved though it never does instead it modulate okay so can we have from here And now we came back to the first melody. And here it's, uh, the remark is con forza, with four. So he does not see it, at least here, as a lyrical theme. You see it as a more uh, authoritative one. By the way, I would strongly recommend to play this... see anything. So I would do one, two, three, one. Uh, I think you should start with the bass. You should not play it before the beat. Okay? Can you try? Good. Okay, you'll practice uh, it afterwards. So, can we start once again uh, from, from here, and then when you come back to the theme, makes, make it more representative, more comforts. Okay?
Yeah, again, what we spoke about. Not. But. Uh, hiding these eight notes in the left hand. Okay. Now we come to the middle section, which is, of course, slower, metamorphic. But since he writes con anima, I don't think it should be that slow. Otherwise, when we come to the forte here, it kind of will be strange. And also, again, do not make it sound like a nocturne. It is still tam paradadi tirari tiradara. Still feel the spacing, okay? Okay, can I try to play it faster? Uh, you see, he doesn't write adagio or lento. He writes menomoso, slower than the first, which, as we remember, is uh, allegro appassionato, right? So, param, 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 param. Let's try in this tempo, right? Yes, yes. Let's do it again. Do not fall into feeling dum pam 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 but da piram para in three. Okay? Once again, please. This is definitely sounds very lyrical and very reminiscent of course. Mm -hmm. oh. mm. You know, this etude 
uh, in C sharp minor. But still minuet. Da da die ram pa pa ra ra. Okay. I would pay more attention to the right hand. And I would go in this melody to the second bar. And this lighter, it recedes to relatively to the background, okay? have it still more expressive. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so avoid this each chord, okay? Let's do it once again. should not go to such a piano, I think. Mm. If you don't want it to be forte, at least something like mezzo forte, more open, right? I can understand very uh, 
very clearly that this faster tempo is uh, very unfamiliar and kind of unnatural, uh, it feels unnatural to you. Afterwards, it's your decision, but even if you decide to play it slower, still not in eighth notes, in quarters. I can hear it like this. Uh. But definitely not this. Well, let us go back and restore whatever you decide to do in the middle section. Here we are back into this Polonaise rhythm, okay? Probably in, uh, in the couple we do not, uh, do not do the repeat. We go just uh, for, uh, for one time. And here... <laughs> we will need to slow down but in a kind of, it not to become weak, but to feel like a conclusion. Can you do for the last time uh, this conclusion? Oh. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, I th it is a difficult piece. It's much uh, easier musically to play. The character is immediately clear. Here it is uh, somewhat there is a contradiction. Okay, good. Thank you very much.
Okay, I would not mind beginning uh, with a Prokofiev, yes? Okay. Okay, good luck. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Professor Berman? No. Yeah. He came from uh, Harbin. Oh, from Harbin. Yeah. I've just been in Harbin recently <laughs> for the competition there. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, very good. So we do the. S uh, the second sonata. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let us. Do the first movement and then we'll see how uh, quickly we can proceed. Okay. Okay? okay. Very good.
Very good. You played very expressively and with, great, uh, with good energy. This all I like very much. Now, what I would like to say, you know, people were writing about Prokofiev uh, the, uh, I like one musicologist's definition of Prokofiev's style in early sonatas of masks, like there are various masks, uh, like in a carnival. Uh, this is one. This is a different character, completely unrelated. This is different. This is different. This is different. Uh, and this changes uh, from one character to another. I would recommend to do with a much greater contrast, especially in the development section when uh, he, as is often done, he make different characters, different themes clash with mm -hmm. each other. Okay, uh, let us start once again. Yes, please. We start with in mezzo forte. We do not come to forte until here. So maybe it would be good. And maybe uh, character wise, the step wise increase in intensity probably it would be good not to start too loud, mm -hmm. okay? okay? Yeah, 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 good, good, good. Do not change the tempo. Whatever your tempo is, stay uh, in the tempo. Can we do it again? Can you please use less pedal? Relentando gradual. Right? Okay. Uh, this music can conceivably be treated as a lyrical thing, which you s seem to be doing. The only problem is that what will we do with the second theme? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a clearly lyrical uh, theme, which I fear will be 
kind of upstaged by the... Uh, I would treat it a little bit differently. First of all, faster, it's pure mosto, uh, and more crystalline. You know. This kind of slightly frozen uh, quality of sound, yeah? Yeah, probably yes. Probably less legato, you're right. He doesn't write it legato. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Let's do it once again. Can you make your fingers a little bit more clear, like little icicles, if you want. Yeah? But in piano. Yes, and he clearly marks mm, dash on the first note, no dash on the second, so in effect a little diminuendo, right? Except he writes tempo primo. This is a lyrical theme, but not uh, in a slower tempo. It will be slower. Look here. You, of course, remember that in the fourth movement mm -hmm. it appears. And there it's written moderato. Mm -hmm. There it probably would be a good thing to play slower but not here, so lyrically, but in tempo. So if your tempo is a... Probably each of this taram, param, pa, a little uh, diminuendo in each of the bars. Yeah, good. that when he writes ritenuto, and especially when he kind of spells out in syllables, this should be m something more deliberate. Uh. Yeah, just kind of pull the reins. OK, 
Okay, so interesting. First time he writes non leggero, <laughs> quite deliberate. Later, this is <laughs> he writes scherzando, so probably more leggero. Let's distinguish between them. From here, please. <laughs> From here. crescendo but very clearly. Can we do from scherzando please? Da -da 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 -da. Bam. Yeah, another bar, another bar. Here are bam, one, two, three. Continue in the same tempo. It's the same tempo. Okay. Yes, I agree. This is important. But this too. So make them both expressive. Yes, 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 and mezzo forte is not cancelled, it's thin. Right? Yeah, legatio. And into the pianissimo. But please, whenever you play pianissimo, make sure it is focused. The sound is focused and not blurry. Yeah. From yeah, good, good. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Very good. Let's do it even better. Much sharper contrast, dynamic contrast, character contrast. The same place, please. This is uh, a very important section of the development. Important because he brings together various things. So, uh, and you will see that each thing derives from what we heard before in the exposition. So this is Now, where is it from? Where is it from? Um, where is it from? Yeah. Uh, from, okay. It's from. Mm -hmm. Now, what this? Mm -hmm. 
is from. Mm. It's this figure. You see? Then what we will have, then of course this, this is from uh, what we heard before, right? This is clear. Then we'll have this. Here we have this. Which is the second theme in augmentation. Agree? Uh -huh, yes. yes, and what's this? Where is from? Mm. I don't know. On the first page. On the first page. Oh, like you're... Yes, right. <laughs> All this. So. The challenge here, of course, is to make each of these element, uh, elements speak. Each to be, because it's actually very easy uh, to play if you consider this is the melody. Everything else is the accompaniment. Huh? But if both these and and them. If they all speak, then the music becomes much richer. Okay? Like Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Let's do it. This chords, mm -hmm. remember, we always had the first note stronger. Mm. It's of course the ending is very very difficult but if you can make uh, as little relentando as possible it will, uh, will be very helpful yeah very good okay let me hear the second movement
So to begin with, there is a misreading. Mm -hmm. This is the bass clef, not the Ooh, yeah. treble clef. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, it repeats. You know, in 1918, Prokofiev uh, came to the United States and he actually his first career successes were in piano playing rather than in composing. There is uh, even uh, a photo of that time uh, with the caption underneath. Uh, it's uh, the photo of him and Stravinsky, and the caption says, composer Stravinsky and uh, pianist Prokofiev. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Prokofiev was less than happy uh, to read this, uh, but here you are. When he played, he played mostly his own works, almost nothing else, and actually, uh, he was a very strong advocate for his music as a performer. Uh, and the music made a very, very shocking impression. Actually, people did not understand uh, much. And one critic, for instance, wrote, that this movement, the one you have just played, uh, reminded him the mammoth attack on prehistorical plateau. So basically what he reacted was this kind of brutal force. And that's what we need. We need a much Stronger fingers. And then subito piano, but still very clear. So what you need to work out is the, the finger staccato. Basically, a kind of pizzicato, kind of plucking from the piano. Okay, kind of play slowly uh, like this, both hands. No, no, look here. First of all, it's really a kind of plucking motion which you, you do not go down, up, but you go like this, like. Okay. Okay, very good, very good. Now, the objective is, when you practice like this, there are several things to watch. First of all, to stay in the key for as short time as possible. Which means this movement is done very quickly. Okay, try. And the second thing is, make sure that you do not become tense here. What you need to do, it's very easy to kind of lock mm -hmm. your muscle. Can you play and put your hand here and play? Just play right hand. 
Yes. So you will feel that your fingers are working, and this is uh, natural. But what you should feel that after every stroke, there is a relaxation, that the finger, uh, the muscle does not stay tense. Okay. Yes, 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 very good. Uh, both hands in this tempo, please. Now, piano, but the same touch. Forte. Yes, you need to reach the forte here in this crescendo. Start from piano, please. No, it stays in forte. Now, what uh, is good to notice that this texture he uses it very often, the chords in which one voice continues staying on the same note and the others are moving. Mm -hmm. Throughout his life, he is using it. <laughs> So, whenever you have the moving voices, you hear them very clear. Right? Can you play from here? Forte, forte. Yeah, so once again, once again, the movement is not into the piano, the movement is grabbing it from out of the piano. Look, it's not this. this. Can you please? Yes. Okay. Good. So, practice like this, but be careful. Be careful so that, that uh, there is no residual tension, mm -hmm. because if you are not careful, uh, you'll get tendinitis and it's no fun. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, can we go to the second theme here? Yeah, first of all, I think it's para ram, para ram, not tara ram, para ram, 
Paradim Pararam. Right? Okay, pianissimo, but very clear. Close to the keys mm -hmm. and very clear fingers. Yeah, and here too, pay attention to what moves. Because that's what makes the melody, right? Yes, and here you will need uh, to hold the pedal. Uh -huh. Right? Okay, both hands, please, from here. Yes, yes. Uh, so I don't think that trying to make it a lyrical uh, middle session actually works, what you seem to try to do uh, the first time. I personally feel that it's kind of more the characters clownish, slightly idiotic, you know. Okay? Mm -hmm. So think uh, about it and it needs to be uh, very contrasting uh, to the outer sections and in the outer section again dynamic contrast extremely sharp. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. Let me hear the third movement then.
is one of quite of a certain kind of pieces or movements which I feel are strongly in the character of a fairy tale. Uh, I must say that fairy tales, uh, Russians are usually very big on fairy tales. Uh, it's the part of everybody's childhood upbringing. And there are, of course, very different fairy tales as in every, uh, in every nation, in ev every folklore. But there is one very special kind of fairy tales, and this is uh, fairy tales connected with spells, with spells being cast, with transformation, you know, all kind of uh, uh, tales about uh, a protagonist walking in the forest, mm -hmm. and it's a very strange forest. Uh, no leaves on the trees and no birds and then he or she, depending on the tale, realizes that these are actually not trees but living people which were turned by an evil uh, sorcerer into the trees, this kind of thing. In music, of course, fairy tale uh, received a lot of attention in Russian music. You just uh, take operas by Rimsky-Korsakov. Many of them are dealing with fairy tales of one kind or another. Prokofiev uh, dedicated quite a lot of attention to this particular genre of the music. He has the set of short pieces called Old Grandmother's Fairy Tales. And like there, the kind of trademarks is, first of all, ostinato, stillness of the motion. And long, continuous melody. And in addition, another element here which creates the stillness is this recurrent ostinato. is, as you see, very particular about marking the inflection. So it's, then it goes up.
And so this inflection will need to stay. I, it is undone, and I personally do not think it should be as slow as you play. So to keep these three layers of sound uh, different is quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. So can we try? Mm -hmm. Please. Can you do it slightly softer, leave room for the melody to sound in piano, okay? Crescendo, crescendo. No, it's it's all basically in forte by now. And what I would suggest that uh, first of all, I think it's so much better. It's so much. Uh, the, uh, this whole first statement was so much better. It's the right character, right tempo, and right sound. Now, when you have this crescendo, mm -hmm. what I would do, I would play this ostinato non legato, non legato, even when uh, over here too. Uh, pay attention, he is very uh, precise. Here he asked for 30 seconds. Then it will be later in diminuendo against 16. So can we please play from here? Yes, but but let it still sing.
okay. Forte, forte. And a clear, clear cesura. I think we need a more murky sound and feeling the scrolling tritons. Mm. Continuous diminuendo while here it still continues. have this dynamic shaping, right? So this is the second theme here. It is in 7-8, and I would strongly recommend feeling it in an even three, like one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. In addition, he marks the second bit of this uneven three. and try to hear the melody first. Right? Play it slowly, just right hand. Yes, yes, but in pianissimo. So, what we have here, we have this ostinato. So, I would clearly play not, but,
and within this repeated notes, I would make the same shape as, uh, as here, as in the beginning. But this is not everything. In the left hand, we have is the same motive in augmentation. So let's try to, to have, and that too, I would shape it dynamically in a similar way. Yeah, uh, of course, we slowed down a little bit too much. Mm. And here, when you have the melody, the priority is, of course, given to the melody. Then we have this. Mm -hmm. And this, much less articulated, like kind of ivy, uh, circling uh, around the melody. So can we pl please try to play from here in the tempo of the beginning? Mm -hmm. It's very difficult, it's very difficult. Uh, and you will need to work, first of all, on a very long melodic line, which you did so well in the beginning to do the same way, and much less art articulated this button. Okay, I'm afraid we need to stop here. So I understand that this is a work in progress mm -hmm. and I hope that what we did will help you. Okay? Thank you. You are very welcome. Bravo.